I am Marie of Historical Bell, and today I am going to show you how I made an 18th century bum pad. I have been working on my under things for the 18th century, and to do that I used the Simplicity Pattern 8162, which was by American Duchess. Today I will be making part B of this pattern, the bum pad. Now I've never made this style of bum pad before. I have made other types of 18th century false rumps, most notably a split rump, but the dress that I am currently making that is 18th century inspired and part of my collab project with Caroline of D'Ambrosio Designs calls for a very full skirt. Now the split rump has a nice full skirt to the sides, but this one has a full skirt to the sides and the back. More of the back than the sides, but still pretty evenly distributed, all things considered. What I really liked about this pattern after I cut it out is that it's really only three pieces, and I just think that's fantastic. It is three pieces with ties and after I embroidered that under petticoat in my last video, this went so much faster and was kind of a nice, like, easy project. <laughs> so here I am cutting out the main part of the actual bum pad. So there's the bum pad and then there's the ruffle that goes around it and the waist ties. And I really like that it has a ruffle. I think it kind of, you know, you don't want to look like you have a shelf. For a butt necessarily i think it so the ruffle kind of helps it flow into what will be the skirt or the petticoat i should say now of course if you know me i have to deviate from the pattern a little bit so instead of cutting out the ruffle like they said to i just cut out two way longer strips because i thought it would be easier to just do it that way and it was and when I say cut out, I mean rip because I'm using, I'm pretty sure this is muslin. It came from my basement, y'all. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I'm like 98% sure it's muslin. Now, is that historically accurate? Not really, but you know, my cat doesn't care. Now, I do not follow all sewing rules in their particular order. So one of those is that I iron my fabric after I cut it out, usually because I think if I iron by ironing out beforehand, I, I actually waste time ironing fabric that I'm not going to use and just fold up again or throw into the scrap bin. Therefore, I just um, iron after I cut because I think it saves time and I've never actually had a problem doing that. So there you go. One of my, my own sewing rules, if you will. The first pieces of the pattern that I'm going to sew together are the two long strips that make up the, what I'm going to refer to as butt ruffle. So just pinning those two things there. And then sewing them together with a quick seam on the sewing machine. Now, is this historically accurate? No. Sewing machines did not come about until the 1840s and did not make their way into most American households until the 1860s, 1870s, when they became affordable to most families. But does my kitty care? No. I do think she prefers it when I hand sew though, just because she likes to watch the thread. But now that I have the seam sewn on the butt ruffle, I'm now going to pin a very small hem to finish it off on one side. The other side will be gathered and then sewn into the bum pad. In the 18th century, they were very conscious of using all fabric and not wasting fabric. So therefore, hems are very, very small. So I am only turning up one edge, very, very tiny edge, to make this hem. Can I have my fabric back, please? I would like to continue hemming it. Please. 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 
I then sewed down the hem on my sewing machine and I realized that the way I had pinned it made it so I had to put the ruffle through the machine, but it's such a small ruffle that it didn't really cause any problems and therefore I could still uh, pull out my pins not backwards, which I also have a terrible habit of putting my pins in backwards. Anywho. After sewing the hem, I then went ahead and set my tension all the way to the 5.0 setting and then did a stitch right across the other edge that I had not hemmed on the butt ruffle so that I could gather it. Now, Lucky, of course, has to help me with this step too. She was really interested in the gathering of the butt ruffle and I thought it was just so cute. She loves to just hang out with me and it makes me so happy when she just sits there and is interested in what I'm doing. I feel like I should be teaching her how to sew, but I don't think that she actually has interest in learning how. Whenever I'm gathering something, I like to gather it as tight as it will go. And then I space it out. I ungather it so that it fits the space and that the gathers are even because otherwise I think sometimes I, I get them um, bunched up in the wrong places if I were to just try to like gather it to fit the space. So I always like to gather as tight as it'll go and then ungather for it to fit the space evenly. Now that's what I'm starting to do here. I gathered one section as tight as it would go and then I was kind of hoping to make sure that fits half of it. As you can see, I folded the bum pad in half and then marked the center. So that way I can make sure there is, you know, one half of the ruffle goes on one side and one half fits on the other side and that's going to make it far more evenly gathered. Now to hide the seam that is in the back, even though it's under something else and no one's going to see it, I did a box pleat with the seam being in the very back of the box pleat. Now, I got all of that pinned in place, the ruffle and everything, and then I'm going to sandwich it together. So I'm going to put the other half of the bum pad right on top there. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut out those ties now I'm going to go around my waist and measure those out. And this is just some tape. My uncle actually sent me this in exchange for making uh, him and my aunt face masks during the pandemic. I love a good old fashioned barter. And then I'm going to sandwich my ties into the bum pads as well. Again, put that sandwich right on top. I have pinned down the ruffle to the bottom of the bum pad, but now I'm going to take those pins out and repin it all together in one fell swoop. That way I just have to do one seam around everything. I rather pin twice than sew twice. Now here comes the moment of truth where you turn it inside out 
and hope everything worked. <laughs> Yay! It looks like it's supposed to. So of course it is still very flat. Um, but never fear, I'm about to fix that. I'm about to stuff this bum pad with some polyfill, which I also had in my basement. Is this historically accurate? No. But it was what I had, and for me, doing this particular project, the historical accuracy does not mean as much, um, because it's going to be a costume. It's not going to be a reenactment outfit. Therefore, I am looking for a historically accurate shape and not so much historically accurate methods. Now I'm going to pin my opening clothes and then also I'm going to pin where I'm going to sew two lines that separate the the um, hip portions of the pad from the bottom portion of the pad. So I'm then going to go ahead and sew the opening closed. And then I just stuck the entire bum pad through my machine and just kind of crammed it all in there and sewed that line and it actually worked really well. I was like, this might be a bad idea, but I thought it'd be easier to stuff it before I sewed those lines because otherwise, how do you get all of that sewed right? Now, as I mentioned, I have been doing a collab project with Caroline D'Ambrosio Designs, and she sent me some sneak previews to share with you. So, look at this beautiful skirt that's happening, and this is her design for the challenge project that we're doing. Can you guess what it is, what the challenge project is based off this design? Let me know in the comments. But here is my bum pad all ready for my challenge project, which will be coming out in the next video. I'm very happy with it. I think it's going to give the dress the perfect shape that it needs. I also had a lot of fun just flapping around in it. <laughs> it it kind of, I felt like a, um, like a chicken or a duck. But a very cute duck. Make all the boy ducks go quack. Of course, I had to do the chicken dance because, you know, it, it's perfect for shaking your butt with a bum pad. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of those wonderful things. And I will see you next time for the reveal of my challenge project.